Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. Now, we've done a few videos on the fondler, Michael Matheson, uh, and his reluctance to hand his iPad over for inspection, and the willingness to very quickly pay £11,000 to make sure this problem went away quickly. Although it may not, but more on that later. His position is becoming increasingly untenable, but not just over the whole iPad issue. Figures today reveal that up to 1,400 people may well have died in A&E while waiting to be seen. They've waited beyond the four-hour target time and they have died. 1,400 of them. The buck stops with Michael Matheson. He's surely got to resign now. Now, the uh, SNP have had a bad history of health secretaries, of course. You had Jean Freeman, a woman who may well yet, if ever evidence is found, face corporate manslaughter charges, followed by Hamza Yousaf, a man, well, he's failed at everything, so why not fail at health? And now, of course, Michael Matheson. If anything, and if you're barely believable, he's actually worse as a health secretary than Hamza Yousaf was. It's almost a case of, here, hold my beer, watch what I can do. So, between possible uh, dodgy stuff on his iPad to overseeing 1,400 deaths a year while waiting in A&E, you have to wonder how much longer Michael Matheson will be in his job. Here goes. So, NHS A&E waits linked to 1,400 deaths as the SNP once again slated for catastrophic stewardship. When you keep putting people in like him, and I think he's as dodgy as anything. He really he just does, doesn't he? You can imagine him sitting there with his little iPad in one hand, his left hand, you know what I mean? Oh, he's a creep, isn't he? Anyway, over a thousand excess deaths could be linked to huge delays in Scotland's emergency rooms, say Scottish Labour. Do you know, he could beat Putin's double, couldn't he? Only he's worse than Putin. Putin's outright bad bastard. He's trying to be nice and killing people, maybe, allegedly. Uh, well, certainly through inaction and uh, incompetence. Anyway, long wait in Scotland's accident and emergency rooms may be linked to up to 1,400 excess deaths this year, Scottish Labour has suggested. Uh, the party pointed to a calculation from the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, which said earlier this year that one extra death occurs for every 72 patients that spend 8 to 12 hours in an emergency department. And there are a lot of them spending 8 to 12 hours in an emergency apart uh, department. Uh, between the start of 2023 and September 20, uh, 30th, 103,000 patients waited more than 8 hours in Scotland's A&E departments. Scottish Labour said this would equate to about 1,436 excess deaths. Now, this can be easily solved. And I've, I've, said, I've said this before. There's 105 hospitals in Scotland. Put two doctors and three... No, one doctor and three nurses on two day shifts, mornings and afternoons. Tend to not get so many in the evening. At a cost. And we think it came out at £20 million a year. Now, how do you raise £20 million a year? Well, when you're spending £8 million a month on spin doctors in the NHS, all you've got to do is say, well, three months worth of spin. Job solved. And that extra doctor and three nurses in each shift, so from the two shifts in each hospital, will bring down waiting times significantly. People will live. People will be cured quicker. People will be sent home quicker. The easing on all the stresses and strains within the hospital will be greater. It's not a difficult calculation, but it does mean that they will have to spend less money on spin and independence and more on actual patient care. And that's not the SNP way. Uh, in February, the Royal College said some 23,000 excess patient deaths may have occurred in England due to long A&E waits. Uh, it's not a problem limited to Scotland, of course, but we're looking at the Scottish figures. Uh, at the time, NHS England said the figures were very unlikely to give a full or certain picture on excess deaths. Scottish Labour said staff in the NHS need more support. Health spokesman Dane Jackie Bailey said the SNP's catastrophic stewardship of the NHS has left the NHS on the brink. Uh, with a shocking 100,000 waiting over eight hours and potentially 1,436 lives lost, the human cost of SNP incompetence has been left bare. Yeah, well, when you get people 
like the Fondler in charge, like Hamza Yousaf in charge, like Gene Freeman in charge of the NHS over the years. What the hell do you expect? Psychopaths and incompetents, one and all. Uh, Hard-working staff are being pushed to breaking point and they are receiving nothing but warm words from the SNP. With winter fast approaching, Michael Matheson would do well to stop racking up huge bills on his parliamentary iPad. You know, stop wanking, basically, Michael. That would be great. Uh, and get to work to support our NHS. We need action now to tackle delayed discharge. That's not something he's ever worried about. His discharges have been regular, especially when he's in Morocco. Uh, and support primary care and to invest in our NHS workforce. More people. Number one priority. More people. Put money into the system. Hire a doctor. Hire nurses. Um, she said, we know that long waits remain too high. However, patients experiencing the longest waits will generally be those who require admission and are waiting on a bed and a ward. Um, and this, this is um, the Scottish government saying this. My apologies. I'll say this was Jackie Ray. Scottish government is saying that. But that's immaterial. How do you know? How do you know they're waiting for a bed if they haven't been seen, for, you know, in the first eight hours of being at A&E? It is ridiculous. It is, it's weasel words they're using, isn't it? Uh, and here's more weasel words. Our winter plan will support boards to maximise capacity to meet demand and our £12 million expansion of hospitals at home, blah, blah, blah. It's all words, no action. And of course you're not going to get action. You've got a man there who's had enough action to last a lifetime in a whole week in Morocco. I mean, that's all he is. He can't do his job. He's unfit to do the job. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He knows nothing. Uh, and yet he's now desperately more concerned about any kind of investigation to his iPad than what he's actually doing for his day job. You know that only thing going through his head is, what can I do? What can I do? Well, it's simple. Hand over your iPad. They need to send someone in there and say, that's government property. We'll have it back. Thank you very much. And then hand it over and get it inspected. And then watch him crumble. Because he knows the willingness and the speed for £11,000 to be handed over by that man is very, very suspicious. And the very fact that he said, oh, no, it's all right, I'll pay it, I'll pay it, pay it. But he didn't want to pay it to begin with, which means he was putting that through and he expected the Scottish people to pay that bill. That would have been theft in my eyes. He's untrustworthy. He's sleek. He's, he looks shady, doesn't he? He's just got the look of someone who is desperate for the truth not to come out. You can look in my cupboards. I've got nothing. Anyway, I shall round off there, come up, and we'll finish the video. But it goes to show that the SNP are really not the sort of people you need to be running a health service when you see the last three health ministers have all been completely either psych psychologically uh, unfit for duty or sheer elite, you know, incompetence. Or, in some cases, both. They've never had a competent minister at health, have they? 17 years and they've never had one that can do his job. Anyway, round off that, come up and we'll finish the video. As we're always told, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. And yet it seems that Michael Matheson has a lot to fear. Why is his fondle slab so important to him that he will pay £11,000 in the hope that this problem goes away because he knows he at no point can he ever have it inspected. But surely, Michael, you have nothing to fear. But regardless of what's on that, and it may well just be normal human fun time, uh, and that's fine if that's what he wants to watch. Nobody minds, but we don't want to pay for it. You know, if, he pay, if it's inspected, it is just, you know, Debbie Does Dallas classic, you know, something like that. Then that's fine, we don't care. But if it's dodgy stuff, then yeah, we care and he needs to be facing the, uh, the consequences for that. And that's fine. Nobody needs to know exactly what it is unless it's wrong. However, however, more importantly as well, is the fact that 1,400 people have died on his watch. That alone makes his job insecure. If he had any decency, which he won't have because he's in the SNP, he'd resign. But he's not going to resign, is he? He's in the SNP. I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been illuminating and has made you look into the character of Michael Matheson a little bit closer. Till next time, stay safe, stay well, and let's just keep the pressure on the fondler. Bye.